SEC Basketball presented by your local Ford dealer. This Saturday afternoon, we bring you ACC Hoops from Clemson University, and we're inside Little John Coliseum for the second meeting of the season back in January. Miami and Clemson played a one-point game down in Florida. The rematch coming up here from Little John, and it's great to have you with us. I'm Evan Leffler with Brian Oliver behind me, and Brian, the Clemson Tigers have won four in a row. They had their second COVID pause this season, but they bounced back nicely on Wednesday against Wake Forest. Yeah, Evan, this is a team that hangs their hat on defense. Second in the conference in points allowed, and as of late in that four-game stretch, they have been dominating as far as their defense. If they're going to keep it going, interested in seeing how they're going to be able to do that against this Miami team. Amir Sims is the guy for the Tigers. That sets the tone. He leads Clemson in points, rebounds, and assists, and he's pretty good defensively, too. Yeah, this is the guy that does it a lot, and that, and that one-point victory at Coral Gables, he is a mismatch man. He had 25 points in that game. He's a guy that can go inside, outside. Interesting to see for Miami how they guard him because he is a mismatch problem, especially for this Miami ball club. Well, for the Hurricanes, Isaiah Wong has been a problem for opponents. He's coming off scoring 29. He can really light it up, too. Well, if you look at what he's able to do, this is a guy is a shot maker. And the season has been frustrating for Jim Laranagel with all of the injuries. He's been the lone bright spot because he's a guy that can go get his own shot. He can score in a lot of different ways. Interested to see how he's able to get his offense early if they're going to have an opportunity to win today against that Clemson defense. Well, January 2nd in Coral Gables. Sims, the go-ahead bucket. Isaiah Wong, a prayer at the end, almost went in. It was a classic finish. We hope for a similar great finish today in Clemson. We're just about set for the 30th all-time meeting in men's basketball between Miami and Clemson. Your Toyota starting five for the Hurricanes. Elijah Olani is good to go. Took a knee to his thigh in Miami's last game, but he's ready for basketball today. Wong McGusty with Olani in the backcourt with Walker and Brooks up front. Hurricanes have lost four in a row. Tigers have won four in a row. And this quintet has been very good lately. Trap, Honor, and Hemingway coming off his best scoring game as a Tiger. Hunter Tyson and Amir Sims in the front court for Brad Brownell, who's seeking his 200th victory today as the Tigers head coach in his 11th season. Already the all-time winning as Ben's basketball coach Clemson history. Brownell looking for a milestone, and that guy hoping to spoil the show here in South Carolina. Tim Clockerty throws it up in the air, and we're underway. Hemingway trying to pick up where he left off on Wednesday. Scored 17 in Winston-Salem. Knocks down a three, 15 seconds in. And Evan, that's one of the reasons why Hemingway is in the lineup because this is a very good defensive team that sometimes has a problem with scoring. Good look for him to come out and knock down that first three of the game. He was an efficient scorer on Wednesday too, Brian. 17 points on seven field goal attempts. Five of six from three. The rebound for Hunter Tyson. We know Miami is short-handed, and yet these two teams have typically played close games. Last four meetings over the last few years decided by five points or less. But it's six-nothing Tigers as Sims connects from outside. Again, we talked in the open about Amir Sims and the fact that he's a mismatch. You've got a guy like Walker guarding him. He has the option to take him inside and out. I got a dual threat because he can't stretch the defense from knocking down the threes. Amir Sims knocked down three early threes in the game in Florida back on January 2nd. It's early, but you feel Miami needs that one to go down, and Isaiah Wong delivers. Well, you talked about Miami and them being shorthanded, but they've got a really solid five. And when you look at where they are on the perimeter and the fact that they've got three guys in Alana He and McGusty and obviously Wong, they can put points on the board. It's just a matter of how fast they come out. You see Hemingway with another jump shot. Clemson coming out, starting out strong. Hemingway feeling it, and the steal for honor, but the rebound for Walker. Her 
Canes in their last game losing to Florida State by 17 as Isaiah Wong gets two more. It's been a really tough stretch from a scheduling standpoint for the Hurricanes with battles with Florida State. Obviously a tough one last Saturday against Georgia Tech and it doesn't get any easier this week. They go to Charlottesville next. And then one of the things we talked about is that Clemson has won four in a row. Miami loses the four. And so for them that's big is that they've got to start out with a lot of energy. Can't fall behind early, especially against this team, this team with uh, Clemson in their defense. Amir Sims, not this time. And Wong flies in for the rebound. Anthony Walker's become a really solid, consistent scorer lately for the Hurricanes. Draws the foul on Hunter Tyson. Walker scoring in double figures seven times in his last eight ball games after doing it just three times in his first dozen. And that's, that's the guy for me is the wild card today for Miami is that Walker gives you a lot of opportunities for scoring and defense. Again, we talked about the backcourt guys, but I think for them to win today, they need some production for him. He doesn't have to have a big solid day, but he's got to get up into the teams. Getting some offense from this year. Brooks would be a bonus too. Keeps it alive. Olaniyi to the basket, lost it off him, out of bounds, Clemson ball. One of the things you'll see about this Clemson team that makes them so good is that they play solid defense, do a really good job of being able to help weak side. Come up with a lot of deflections that last time being able to force that turnover. Jonathan Bears in the game for the Tigers. Brad Burnell has much more substitution freedom than Jim Laranaga has because of the depth on his bench. On or off the mark from deep rebound, Cameron Mcgusty. Mcgusty is another guy that the Hurricanes would like to get going. Brooks from the baseline, nothing but that. Well, if you're Jim Laranega, you have to be ecstatic with how your team has come out and started out right now. Again, we talked in the last few games uh, against Florida State and Georgia Tech. They were really slow as far as the start. Right now, doing a good job of being able to knock down shots early. Both teams are three for five as Honor rises up and makes the Tigers four of six. And Nick Honor's a guy that I really don't think get a lot of, a lot of credit because of what he's been able to do. This is the guy that a couple of games ago hit the game winner against Georgia Tech. I love his ability to be able to get in and play within himself and take the offense as it comes. A couple games ago, but two and a half, three weeks ago now, considering the second COVID pause that this Tiger team has endured, Isaiah Wong has come to play. He's hit his first three shots. And this is one of those matchups that I've been circling to between Honor and uh, Wong. Wong is able to get to the, uh, uh, the point where he can shoot over him. Hemingway cools off. It's amazing how easy at times Isaiah Wong makes it look at the offensive end. Well, and the thing is with no likes, he's taking a lot of responsibility. You see Anthony Walker filling it. Again, how about the offensive outburst from Miami? Again, this is a team that has struggled in the past in the first half. Doing a good job coming out and finding their offense and knocking down shots. Hurricanes take their first lead on the Walker three. Really improved from beyond the arc over the past month. Hemingway lost it on the drive, and he touched it last. It's Miami ball. We got both teams coming out showing some offense early. You see Anthony Walker knocking down the three. Got a nice one. Miami up by two. When Miami and Clemson first met a month and a half ago in Florida, scored the first media timeout, I think it was 2-2 two to two or 4-2. to two. High flying offensive game so far, 12-10 Canes. Let's check our four keys to the game. What you got for today, Brian? Well, for Miami, we talked about Isaiah Wong and what he does. I think that they need to have offensive pro production from the supporting cast. And for Clemson, we talked about that stifling defense, turning that defense into good offense. Right now, Evan, both teams shooting the ball extremely well. Miami, 5 of 7, shooting 71%. Clemson, 4 for 8, already knocking down two from behind the arc. Mcgusty attacks Bear and scores, and now the Hurricanes are six of eight. And I'm curious to ask you, Brian, how how frustrated do you think Brad Brownell is with the Tiger defense at the start today? He has to because when we spoke with him the other day, he talked about one of the things that he can tell is that when they come out, how intense are they in paying attention to detail, especially defense? Miami being able to get whatever they want early in the first half. And they've hit some tough shots. They've played with aggressiveness at the offensive end. And they lead by four. 
And that's a guy the Tigers would love to get going. Alamir Dawes hasn't scored much lately, but he knocks down a three his first shot today. Well, one of the things you'll see today is that Clemson is a lot deeper. They're going to go 10-11 guys, and then what they're going to do is try to wear you down. Interesting to see if Miami can keep up this production. Clemson doing a good job of knocking down shots as well. The Hurricanes are now three for three from deep as Olani hits. When we talk, Devin, about Miami, the fact that they're shorthanded, and when you look at the production they get from the three guys on, their, on, the, on the outside, Alani, he is one of those guys. You see great penetration by McGusty, realizing that he can get Alani over there, set it up. Definitely got to be ecstatic if you're Jim Laranaga. His team already out with 17 points right now early in this game. Yeah, Kim Augusti's on pace for about 25 assists. He's got four assists in the first six and a half minutes. Unable to respond, John Newman missed it, but Sims goes for a little stare walk into the crowd. It's Miami ball. And you also see, Evan, with this Miami lineup, when you have Dane Gack in there, a lot smaller. They have to do a good job of being able to limit Clemson to one shot and done. Cannot afford to have offensive rebounds and putbacks. Dawes extending the pressure on Wong. Wong's got the size advantage on Dawes there. Walker juggled it, recollects. Seven to shoot here for Isaiah. And on the weak side, it's Olani who read it well and lays it back up and in. If you got to look at the pace right now that Miami's playing with that last time, Olani being able to crash off his boards, John Newman not doing a good job of being able to turn to put a body on him. By the way, Clemson's last bucket ruled a two instead of a three for Alamir Dawes, who attempted a season-low two field goal attempts on Wednesday at Wake. Sims, a double-double against the Deeks. Tipped up and in by Bear. Anthony Walker got caught weak side, not paying attention. To He's got Bear coming back. Bear doing a good job of being able to crash the board. Again, talking about for Clemson, you have to turn and put a body on them because they've got bigs that are very active, especially on offensive glass. Walker trying to keep it rolling. First time in the last six, seven possessions that Clemson has got a one and done. Miami had been six of its previous seven from the floor. The one miss tipped back up and in by Olani. So here's Dawes looking for his shot behind the line this time, but it won't go. Dane Gack doing a good job of being able to show to buy Isaiah Wong. Just enough time to get over there and challenge that shot, that shot by Dawes. Olani clangs one off the iron and Hemingway pulls down the board. Willie Harrington out there defensively, the walk-on from Illinois. Been a valuable walk-on for this team when they've needed a body to give it their all. Nice pass from Sims. One dribble for Bear. No, Sims, no! Good defensive possession by Miami because you gave Clemson two opportunities. Clemson falling short, not being able to score close to the rim, and then that putback by Sims coming up short. Long kicks it. Walker gets his own rebound and then missed the dunk. Certainly the Hurricanes, Brian, playing with more energy right now. Yeah, and you can tell that on that play just to seem like they're quicker to the ball. Penetrations being able to get to the lane and break them down. Again, this is a good Clemson defense. Not easy to score on. Step back, long, no. And Hemingway pulls down the rebound. Only had one foul call in the first nine and a half minutes. Free flow in action, and of course, you can blame that one on me. Harrington called for the bump, and we'll take the time on. I'm sure I'll get chastised by the truck during the break. Brad Brownell's team needs to dial up the defense because the Canes have been hot. Miami up by five with 10.24 to go in the first half. Time for our Honda startup. 
Hurricanes made their first three from deep. They've cooled off a little bit, but getting second chance buckets, you see the rebounding disparity. And one of the things we talked about is the fact that they need to be able to find production from the other guys. So far, Miami doing a good job of being able to score behind the arc. I think being able to break them down, and one of the things that they've been recipients of is being able to get inside the lane and finding the extra guy. They've come out, and I thought they spread the offense and forced Clemson to have to recover. And you've got to make shots too, Evan, and so Clemson not being able to recover. Miami doing a good job earlier on of knocking down shots, most notably knocking down three early from behind the arc. Brian, obviously Georgia Tech came out on fire last Saturday, but you saw that in person. W what difference in Miami do you see today compared to last week? Well, it's the energy level. I think that they came out, and you can tell from the beginning, not only are they knocking shots, it's how they're getting, getting to the extra balls, and then also being able to limit Clemson. This is a team that's big, and they, they are deep. They're going to run guys at the offensive uh, glass, and so far they've been able to knock down shots. You see Amir Sims being called for that. Offensive foul just flat out just shoved Nasir, Nasir Brooks. And did not get away with it. It's his first personal. Jim Laranaga losing his point guards. No Chris Likes. Officially ruled out for the entire season. It's just a heartbreaking way for Likes the season to end. He played just two games, none since December. And then Harlan Beverly ruled out for the season as well. So Isaiah Wong playing out of position. Laranega said he's done as well as I could possibly expect, but it's not how we could get him to be his best. Brooks has size with Sims. A mere nice move off the glass. And so I like that move because that's a mass matchup that Sims can win. And he basically tortured them in, in Coral Gables. Yes, he Took did. his time. Nice little jump hook over his left shoulder. If you're Miami, you have to consider being able to help a little bit more if you can. He was 10 for 14 in that game in early January. First game of 2021 for both these teams. The next time each of these clubs take the floor, it will be March. And on the baseline, the foul's going on. Omax Prosper. Evan, you see Amir Sims realize that he's got an opportunity to take a couple dribbles, get a little a little separation, jump hook. You see Isaiah Wong a little late. And one of those things, if you're Nasir Brooks, you want to push him back to the help in the middle. A lot of times, if you give a guy a chance to get back to the baseline, then you're basically in no man's land. Wong off the inbounds, knocks it down. Nice out-of-bounds play by Miami, being able to run Isaiah Wong off of that screen. And again, for a guy that's shooting the ball, you like to be able to come in and step into it, being able to receive that, that ball right in the shooting pocket. Nine points in the first 11 minutes for Isaiah Wong. Clyde Trapp hasn't looked for his shot early, so he'll attack here, flips it up wildly. Shot clock did not reset, and the three beats the buzzer. And again, that shot was made because you saw Amir Sims not giving up on the play, coming with the offensive rebound. Best time to shoot a three, especially off of an offensive rebound, gave Alamir Dawes a blade, and he comes up with a nice little pick. Dawes looking for another bucket. He delivers seven points for Alamir. And that's where Clemson is at their best, Evan, when they can get you turned over, get out, and you see the fans, you can hear them here. Clemson's had some solid crowds, certainly limited attendance, 17, 1800, but they're passionate, they make noise, and that's a nice backdoor feed, McGusty. How about the dime by Nasir Brooks? And again, he's one of the better passing big guys. You see, put that ball right there where Cam McGusty can get there. Easy run at the rim. Al Amir Dawes feeling it. Well, you talked about him earlier, not getting a lot of playing time and not being the guy of, of old, but Al Amir Dawes has come out and given Clemson a nice shot in the arm, especially on the offensive end. Brad Brownell was telling us he had a little bit of a groin injury for a couple weeks when the team wasn't playing well, he wasn't playing well, and only double figures once in his last 11 games. But coming into today, looking for his offense and defense leading to offense, he'll take this himself. 12 first half 
points off the bench for Dawes. And again, where Clemson is at their best is that they get up in you and they are aggressive. Been able to turn the tide. Alamir Dawes has done it on both ends of the floor with deflections and then being able to finish. He was really struggling physically, Brad Brownell said, but he, he really tried not to show it. He's one of those guys that won't really tell you that he's injured. He'll just keep playing through it. Anthony Walker knocks down another jumper. He's got five in the half. How about the play of Anthony Walker? Again, talk about supporting Cavs. He's come out and has been hunting his shot. A lot of times, I feel like he's a little too chill when it comes to playing, but today, definitely being able to come out and be aggressive. Doss passed up the look. Still 10 seconds, trap will fire. Miami looking to snap the four game losing skid. You mentioned tough one coming up in Charlottesville against the struggling Virginia team. Wong creates contact and he will get himself to the free throw line. But first we'll get ourselves a timeout. Tigers, Brian, getting a shot in the arm from Alamir Dawes. Oh, Alamir Dawes has come out and given Clemson a huge boost, being able to get back in and take the lead up by one. This is brought to you by the Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Step into the future of lawn care and check mowing off your to-do list for good. Available at mylandroid.com. CPI Security. Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. Back in Clemson, South Carolina. Tigers by one. Entertaining first half. And Alamir Dawes has been phenomenal. Quiet most of February. He's waking up. And you talked him up because he came into the game. And I thought that he did a good job on both ends of the floor being able to give them not only a shot in the arm, it's offensively, but come up with some big plays defensively. And a lot of times when you're a shooter, if you can get it going early, you start to fill it. And right now he's filling it off to 12 points. Five for six. Two for two for two from behind the arm. Behind the arm. Right now telling us you're lucky to find out if he's hurt because he won't tell you. He'll just keep playing. Groin injury bothered him during much of the late January, early February stretch. But after going scoreless and taking just two shots on Wednesday at Wake Forest, Alamir five of six. He's knocked down two threes from deep. 12 points in nine minutes. And now Wong at the line. And here's a quick word from Works. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at mylandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. Isaiah makes a pair and puts Miami back in front. Wong with 11 points. Brooks closed out nicely on Sims. Amir will take it, make it. And I think that's where Sims is going to win the matchup between uh, Brooks. Down on the post, Brooks is big enough and strong enough to keep him from getting where he needs to. What you're going to find though is when they run that pick and roll, a lot of times Sims is not going to go to the basket. He's going to flare out. He said the last time being able to get it yet another three. He's been scoring more lately too, about 17 a game in Clemson's last six. Eight and a half for Sims. Another backdoor feed, McGusty. Again. Beat trap off the, off the cut. And again, I talked about the passing ability of Nasir Brooks. That's the second dime that he's put out there. And again, for Cam McGusty, a lot of times you want to go ahead and throw the ball in and make a cut. Brooks doing a good job of being able to dime him up for that layup. You talked about that. You mentioned it to Jim Laranega, Brooks being a good passer from the post. And that was one of the things he says. A lot of times he looks first. As you see, oh, Walker come up with an amazing block. Trap rejected by Walker. A well played half of basketball. Brooks is going to try it, and that is not his shot. Somehow, I don't think that Jim Laranega is too happy about that one. We had two nice passes and good defense. Said, why not? Chase Hunter, tough shot, comes up short. Wong lost it, and they're going to rule the last touch by Sims. It'll be Miami ball to it the. 
dismay of the crowd here at Clemson. And as I look at this game, you look at it not at 29. I, I look at the pace of it, and if you're Brad Ronnell, you can't be too happy in the fact that you've already given up 29 points with a little bit more than four minutes left to go. We talked in the beginning is that this Clemson team is second in the conference in points allowed at only 63. So if you look at where they are right now, Clemson needs to tighten up a little bit more on defense. Tigers leading the ACC in adjusted defensive efficiency on a Ken Palms go-to metrics. And a good defensive trip that time. Sims tipping the rebound to his teammate. And now when you see with Dane Gack in the on the floor, I would try to get Amir Sims in the low block because he's got a little weight on him and he can take advantage of that one-on-one. -on -one. Just the second foul called on Miami in the entire half. It's the first for Alani. 3.42 to play in the first half. 29 all. When you watch the Clemson Tigers, you usually talk about defense, although Miami has been an impressive 52% from the floor in the first half. Clemson's going to have to put the shackles on them if they're going to keep them to 62. Well, and that's one of the things, again, you talk about how they have won those last four games. They have been very impressive and dominating on the defensive end. But if you're Jim Laranega, you have to be good with the fact that how you guys have come out right now, not only on the defensive end, but how you've been able to score. Again, Miami doing a very good job. We talked about Isaiah Wong with 11 points. Cam Augusti off to a good start. Six points, five assists, and three rebounds for Clemson. They need to tighten it up a little bit more. Those were today's ACC leaders brought to you by Whole Foods Market. Sims again juggled the catch. Sets up Tyson for an open look. And the rebound for Walker. Miami is led by as many as seven. Tigers led 6-0 at the outset. Dengak hadn't taken a shot yet. Back outside for Walker, who lost it on the way, tried to recover, and then touched it last out of bounds. And that play was made by Nick Honor, being able to stay in his ground one-on-one -on -one against Anthony Walker. Good yeah. deflection, and you see help side. That's where Clemson is at their best because they do an amazing job of being able to help off the ball weak side. But Nick Honor very much is the head of the snake on this Clemson defense. Just 5'10", but capable of guarding a bigger guy. And he's like, he's like a pit bull when it comes <laughs> to playing defense. And one of the things we talked to Brad Brownell, he likes to be able to extend his defense and trust his guys to be able to play one-on-one. -on -one. Sims going at Gak, got great position and puts it in. Evan, we talked about when, when you're looking at how Miami has their bigs on the floor. For Amir Sims, if you got Brooks out there, float outside and knock out that three and try to put the ball on the floor. When you got Dane Gak there, pound the ball inside and allow him to go to work. Over the course of the season, Brian, Clemson has found a way to get Sims in the right spot at the right time without forcing it. McGusty was hooked. And before the shot, I think the foul's going on Hemingway. And you see penetration when I thought that McGus was a little bit out of control. You see Hemingway fall there. I gave him a little tug on the arm. Yeah, but I'm going to look at him and be honest with you. I thought that was a little bit more, a little bit of a bailout because you saw McGusty a little out of control. Trying to get it into Olani. Officials look at each other and it will stay Miami ball. Brad Brownell is arguing with the officials, and I'm not sure that I don't agree with them. <laughs> that last time, it seemed like Nick Honor may have hit that ball off of McGusty's own leg. And you look at the replay, it's a good thing I'm sitting next to you, and I don't have a whistle in my mouth. Isaiah Wong, nope. Another offensive rebound. Alani kicks it out. And they call traveling on Dengat. Gak, not a three-point shooter that last time. Opting to put the ball on the floor to a little bit of a jump hop there. Again, if you're Jim Laranega, you have to be content with where your team is right now. Brad Brownell, you have to finish off the half right. Again, you see Brooks back into the game and, and a turnover, something that Clemson doesn't do a lot of. That's only their third of the game. 
Well played half, though. Seven assists for Miami. Kim Augusti has five of them, which is a season high. Right back to Augusti. Skipping into the lane. Not sure what what he just did was different from what Gak did the previous possession. We know a lot of times they'll give guards the benefit of the doubt. Big guys never. You see big block. Yes, indeed. Clemson defense picking it up to the basket. Oh, trying to detonate Tyson. Could not get to the rim cleanly. I've got to see that one again. I don't know if that was actually a foul on Brooks because I saw Tyson come down the lane. They call the foul. Larinaga is very frustrated. Well, uh, you see the pass and him get a running start. How is that a foul? Because I just see Nasir Brooks there and Tyson seems like he tries to avoid him. You see Jim Larinaga letting him have an earful. And every foul for Miami is precious because they don't have too many subs. We encourage you to stick around in the second half for the Ford Fast Break. You'll know it when you see it. Hunter Tyson. Averaging about six points per game. He did not play in the first meeting this year against Miami. It's one of two. And we got a timeout with 1.35 to go in the half. Here's the stat of the day for you, Brian. The Miami Hurricanes, it's not just this year that they've been lacking depth. It's been 105 games since the Hurricanes played 10 players or more in a game. <laughs> you got to go back to December of 2017, and you compare that with Clemson this year, I mean, they've had double-digit players in all but one game. Ironically, it's the Miami game when Hunter Tyson was out and, and John Newman was under the weather. Clemson only played nine, but the difference for these two coaches in terms of what they have, the weapons to utilize, it's striking. Well, and it's been unfortunate for Jim Laranaga and his ball clubs, and obviously when you look at some of the guys that they've had in Sam Wardenberg uh, that have not been able to play, Rodney Miller that's been out, and then most notably, the up and down with Chris Light. I mean, this was something when they talked about with his injury, maybe coming back at the beginning of January. It's, it's kind of stretched out to the point where he's out for the entire season. And when you look at, this was a team that many were picking to finish in the upper echelon, but they've been plagued with in in injuries throughout the season. Hurricanes had six guys who scored between 9 and 13 points in the earlier meeting with Clemson. Half of those six guys are not playing today. To the basket, Brooks fouled by Tyson from behind. Great read by Isaiah Wong because when you have him playing in pick and roll action, you have to honor him. And he pulled two guys, realized that he's got a cutting Nasir Brooks. Good read. And a lot of times you want to give your big guy a pass we can finish. Nasir Brooks doing a good job of being able to come up big on both ends of the floor. A lot of empty seats on that bench. Earl Timberlake had a good game against Clemson. 11 points, 8 rebounds. He's no longer available. Harlan Beverly scored 10 with 3 rebounds, 3 assists against the Tigers. And they're also missing Matt Cross, who just announced he's going to transfer to Louisville. I thought it interesting, too, when we talked to Larinaga. I mean, obviously, you want to stay focused on the season. But as you look ahead for next season and the opportunity to have this year back, wondering how many guys, um, their decisions to take advantage of that will play into next year, especially with their health. Mm -hmm. Miami has had no COVID issues, one of the couple teams in the league. But they haven't been able to practice because they haven't had the bodies due to Injury issues. Final minute of this first half. Neither team being able to, to score in the last few minutes. I talked about the pace as favorite Clemson as of late. Good defense by Sims. On the drive, McGusty barely able to touch the iron. Shot clock now off. And the Tigers will slow it down and look for the final shot. And that's where good leadership. You see Nick Honor realize he could have shot that wide open three, but he wants to make sure that they get the last shot going into the half. Tigers up two, looking to add to the lead. 
Honor with four. Honor to the bucket. Spins it off the window for two. Nifty finish to the half for Nick Honor. Well, nice little finish, and you see the penetration by Nick Honor being able to go ahead and put a little bit of extra mustard on it to go into the half. Good half for the Clemson Tigers with a lead by four. Yeah, on January 2nd, the halftime score was 34-32 Miami. Today, 34-30 Clemson. Of course, we know Clemson came back to win a month and a half ago. Four points game at the half. With a win today, the Clemson Tigers would have five straight ACC wins, something that has not happened in 31 years since Brian Oliver was Clemson's nemesis in the ACC. Tigers won the regular season championship in 1990. Of course, Brian Oliver, Dennis Scott, and Kenny Anderson and the Yellow Jackets were tournament champs. I'm sure you remember some battles with Eldon Campbell and Dale Davis here at Clemson, South Carolina? Way too many. And that <laughs> year, Clemson actually with those those tower tower guys, they were they were the favorite. They were the, the better team in the league, them and Duke. You know, every single ACC team that year, albeit there were only eight of them compared to now 15, every team in the league in 1990 had multiple guys that would play in the NBA. And that's an offensive foul called on Olaniyi. Jim Laranega pointing to the restricted area. We'll see if he has a case. And you see the penetration. And you see Tyson outside of the restricted area. And again, if you see great camera action by the guys out in the truck, and you see Tyson with a nice little recovery there. That's Again, that's Clemson at his best when they were making the rotations. Hemingway only took three shots in the first half, made two of them. And it'll be going back the other way. When you think of your plan days, do you kind of recognize that every team in the league had multiple NBA guys on the roster, even the teams in the bottom of the standings? I, I pay more attention to that later in life, but then when you're playing, you're not paying attention because, I'm again, I'm not thinking that those guys are per, potential NBA guys, but it's amazing that going back over the time and see the number of guys that have gone on and you see Anthony Walker knock down that shot that have been able to make it to the NBA. Indeed. That's the first field goal for Miami after going the final 5-11 of the first half without a bucket. Back to a two-point game, minute into the second half. So we said earlier, last four meetings between these two teams have been decided by one, five, five, and one. Sims with a left hand. Good to see Amir Sims be able to back down Brooks again. Most of the first half, he's been able to make his li living on the outside because he's got a, a little bit more physical matchup against Brooks. Beyond the winning streak and wanting to be playing good ball, this game's important for the Tigers as they try to earn one of those top four spots in the ACC standings to get a top four seed in the tournament. Advance directly to the quarterfinals in Greensboro. Shot clock winding down, McGundy, McGusty lost his footing, and Hemingway. Great help side defense, and the pull-up by Nick Honor. A little too strong. You see Brad Ronnell looking over and questioning his coaching staff. Probably not so happy with that, with that shot selection. They got Hemingway. Number two on Alex Hemingway. Evan, I've always looked at the first five minutes of the second half and try to think wait, for teams, you look at how close this game is from Miami. They've got to continue to be able to find shots and knock them down. And for Clemson, again, use their defense. And they had Alan Dawes come in and give them some offense. They've got to get another guy going on the starting five, even if it's Hemingway or Nick Honor. They've got to give somebody, get somebody to get rolling to help Amir Sims out offensively. Clyde traps a guy. They'd love to get some offense from two. Clyde has not scored. Reaching in on Sims and the foul call. 
Anton Brooks. And so you got a guy in this year, Brooks, as a seven-footer. He's not going to want to hang out there and chase a guy out to the three-point line. And again, with Sims' ability to knock down the three, he's got to honor that. You saw the last time being able to put the ball on the floor. Speaking of honor, his outlet kicked, uh, knocked away by Olani. 14 to shoot for the Tigers. Clemson allowed 12 field goals in 40 minutes on Wednesday at Wake Forest. They allowed 12 field goals in the first half today. Holding Wake to 39 points. Here's Tyson for three. Nice pass by Trapp, and you force the defense to have to recognize that pick and roll. There was a shift, and they laid off being able to get Hunter Tyson with his feet set. And again, we talked about Clemson fighting offense. Nice play. And this is danger time for Miami. Clemson has its largest lead. Hurricanes need to answer. Good ball movement. Long from the corner. Hits it. And that play was set up when you saw a lot of heat being able to pull two players on the baseline. Good recognition, good ball movement to be able to get an uncontested or semi-contested yeah. three by Elijah Wong. Pretty good. Uh, it, Isaiah Wong. Isaiah, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Pretty good close-up by Ty Suter, then missed the runner at the other end. Elijah Wong would be a fun player. <laughs> Combine the two of them. <laughs> Here's Elijah Olani, the former Stony Brook Seawolf. Missed the runner, rebound for Trapp. This is a guy I'd love to see the Tigers get going. Trapp has been such a key energy guy through his four years for the Tigers. Clemson missed an opportunity when he realized that Olani was guarding Sims. We would love to be able to see Sims get him down and seal him under the basket. Trapp, great pass inside for Sims. Good recognition by Clyde Trapp realizing that he, again, on that pick and roll a lot of times you tell your guards to pull out two guys that last time realizing Brooks was pulled away from the basket. Good recognition to be able to dime up Amir Sims under the basket. Beautiful bullet feed with a one hand for Clyde Trapp. Sims the beneficiary. He's got 14 and Isaiah Wong now has 16 draining the baseline jay. How good was that? Uh, again, Isaiah Wong being able to be able to get to the to the corner realizing that at 6'3", he can shoot over Nick Honor whenever he can get his feet set. Wong's offense keeping the Hurricanes in it. Here's Trap to the bucket. Clyde Trap doing a good job of coming off that pick and roll with a little bit of a hesitation. He froze Brooks. Brooks was caught in no man's land, not knowing whether to, to help off the ball or get back over to Mir Sims. Good finish by Trap. Appreciate Clyde coming through right on cue. It's just you watch enough Clemson games and you know they get offense from him. It's a huge difference maker. Next factor. McGusty through the contact. Brooks unable to slam it down. And here's Trap. Marching the other way. Sims going to work on Walker. Kicks it. Clyde for three. No, sir. You see the extra pass by Sims, but I thought he had a matchup issue right there with Walker. You oh. see, Honor Nick. just ripped it away from Walker. Good defense by Nick Honor. Sims looking for Tyson. Pretty good defense by Olani to poke it away. Say, these are two teams that are both really grinding. You wouldn't necessarily think from their body language and effort that Miami is the team on a four-game losing streak. Clemson is on a four-game winning streak. Both those things are true, but they're both playing tough. Wong, two nice. more tough points. Love the fact that Jim Laranaga was clear. He was clear, running a clear out for Isaiah Wong, telling him to go get a basket, realizing, hey, you got the you got the matchup right now, and you can go get it. Good finish by Isaiah Wong. Seven of eleven from the floor, 18 points, and well, that's the shot that Amir Sims is going to hit all day long too. 18 for Wong, 16 for Sims. And an entertaining game at Little John Coliseum. Pretty good close out there by Tyson, but Wong hits it anyway.
In a six-point game between the Hurricanes and the Tigers, 30th all-time meeting between these programs. And Isaiah Wong has just continued to, to play at a different weight class than what he belongs. I mean, the responsibility he has right now to be a playmaker and a shot maker and an energy guy, it, it's pretty incredible how he's risen to the task. And where Miami has been able to exploit his ability to score is get away from the pick and a lot of the pick and roll where Clemson is allowed to switch. When you see him score is that he's been able to go off a clear out or a penetration. Again, Clemson's defense has limited Miami and the other guys. For Miami Miami to get back into this. you got to have great spacing and make sure that you do not turn the ball over now. You think about the injuries Wong has battled through too. Turned his ankle against Wake Forest again against Georgia Tech. Chance for a three-point play as Wong crosses over 20. Drawing the foul in the process. Goodness. We'll get ourselves another timeout, but it is the Isaiah Wong show. 20-plus for the ninth time this season. And it's largely Isaiah Wong, Brian. He's four for four from the floor in the second half. And he's been able to carry Miami, especially in the second half, with being able to make baskets. Again, we talked about his ability to be able to shoot over guards. And as of late in the second half, it's been his shot-making ability that's allowed Miami to be able to get in. And most notably, the and one that we were just talking about going into break. And I love the fact that he has been very selective in how he's gone about his business. Again, we highlighted him, Evan, about him being able to start, get his offense and having supporting cast. As of late, Clemson doing a good job on everyone else, but Isaiah Wong has been able to find his offense. Isaiah scored 30, along with seven rebounds, six assists, and no turnovers in the win over Louisville back in January. And, you know, Brad Brownell was stressing to us when you asked about maintaining focus for this game. Look, Miami doesn't have a very good record. They've lost four in a row. But you look at the teams that they've beat. You look at the fact that they almost beat us. They almost beat Virginia Tech. They arguably should have beaten Virginia Tech. They're hanging with the best teams in the league often. Well, and the teams that you talk about, those three victories, as they beat Louisville, beat Duke, and an NC State team that's playing just as well as anyone, especially most notably knocking off uh, Virginia on the road. This foul's going against Clemson. Brad Brownell can't believe it. They called it on Tyson. It's his third. You see Clemson extending your defense, and that's one of the things that Brad Brunell emphasizes that during the course of the game. They want to exercise the ball handler, make them a little difficult for him to run their offense. If you're Miami, keep your spacing. Wong has got the hot hand. You find a way to get him the ball and clear out and let him go to work. Gets past Hunter. Sims picks him up in the switch, so he kicks it for Walker. Rebound battle won by Clemson's Hunter Tyson. Again, we talked about matchups, and you see with Gang Dak on the floor. You see, I would go inside, but missed shot by Chase Hunter. Isaiah Wong's four for four in the second half. Rest of the Canes are one for five since halftime. Walker, not bashful. I thought Walker had an opportunity inside the paint there. Seemed like no one had committed to guarding him, but you got to recognize where you are. You see Miami opting to go into a zone. The key to getting beaten that zone is getting the ball right there inside, right around the free throw line. Or to knock down a three. And Alamir Dawes hits. And if you're Miami, you look at the guys as far as Hunter and Trap. Alamir Dawes is one of the guys you definitely want to keep an eye on. If you want to give up a three, you choose those other two, not the guy that's come <laughs> off the bench and has lit you up for 12 points in the first half. 15 now for Dawes. It feels like his best game since December. Long. 
basically with two defenders right there, finally missed one. I didn't like that my, that offensive possession from Miami. It just it seemed like the spacing was off. They had all five guys on one side of the floor. Chase Hunter for three. In and out. Again, where you're going to beat Clemson is that you have to space and be able to make some penetration extra pass. A oh, great defense by Sims, knocking it away. Clemson's one of the better teams in the ACC as far as help and recover. Tigers now in the secondary break. Wide open, Tyson. Got it! Great play by Clyde Trapp to be able to create the help. And you saw Hunter making an extra pass to get the ball over. And you see one pass get over to another one. Clemson being able to knock down shots and expand that lead. And Blue Shield of North Carolina. We resolve to help North Carolina stay healthy. Your local Ford dealer and Continental Tire for what you do. Clemson scored the last six points on two big buckets. After Miami had gotten back within three, our Coyote Tractor turning point, Alamir Dawes and Hunter Tyson. And for a game that had been going back and forth where it was very close, Clemson being able to expand on that lead by making two big threes. Again, one of the reasons why Clemson is so good is because they're a good defensive team, but they're a team also without ego that loves to share the ball. So this is the largest lead now for the Tigers, up to nine. Isaiah Wong's been fantastic. Anthony Walker has seven. Magusti has six. Olani has five. Brooks has three. Along with Isaiah Wong's 21, that's the Miami scoring. So here's what I'm going to tell you, Evan, is that Isaiah Wong is very, very good, but Miami is not going to win this game unless they have one other guy step up. Either that's Olani or Magusti. They've got to have somebody else, as you see Clemson right now, opting to change their defense into a zone making sure that they've got one guy on Isaiah Wong. Shot clock winding down here. Wong over Sims, he was bumped. Just slightly over aggressive from Sims and he's called for a second foul. One of the best ways to handle the zone is you sort of pick a roll and you see Wong being able to realize to get around there and then you never want your guys to challenge and, and foul the shooter. Now, quick word from Coyote Tractor. At Coyote, we hold dirt in the highest regard. Coyote, we dig dirt. Twenty-three points now for Isaiah Wong as we tick into the fourth quarter of this basketball game. Under ten minutes to play, last game of the month. Clemson looking for a perfect February, a, a month that was interrupted for nearly two weeks due to another COVID pause. All the way to the basket, count it, plus the foul. Clyde Trapp, strong take. And you see Clyde Trapp come off and have a flea run, through, and you see Alana here a little late right there. But how about Clyde Trapp and being able to turn the corner, realizing he's got his man trailing him in McGusty. Good finish by, uh, by a Trapp at the rim. Veteran Tiger, today's his 104th ball game as a member of this Clemson program. Tore his ACL right before the team traveled to Italy for the 2019 World University Games. Has come back from that to be a huge glue guy. Stretching the lead to 10. Walker hits Olaniyi. Sims went straight up. Olani is slow to get up. Five on four right now. And the Tigers have him in one. Now Olani trying to come back into the play, but Dawes wide open. Bang! And if you're good ball movement by Clemson, but if you're McGusty, you got to realize that you've got Allen Mill Dawes in, and you go ahead and you sacrifice that three to trap. Clemson doing a good job of being able to take advantage. Five on four. Dawes has matched a season high with 18. When you see moving the ball from east to west, good skip pass and then rotation over to Alamir Dawes, who has been El Fuego today, being able to knock down that shot. And then, again, you don't want to claim him as your guy, but you may want to reconsider. 
Alamir Dawes, 18 points, 7 for 8, and 4 for 4 behind the arc. You used to drop a little Italian on us? I did, just a little. Love it. Ryan Oliver, a superstar in Italy. For how many years? Oh, my God. 12, 13. Yeah, you had quite a career over there. Trust me, I'm going to tell you the greatest prize at playing overseas is meeting and marrying my wife, Eleonora Oliver. Yeah. Shout out to... You're earning big points right now because yes, she's sir. watching with a big smile on her Shout face. Shout out to my wife, Tiamo Amore. Love it. Oh, great pass. Trapped to Bear. Kind of awkwardly caught. Oh, Bear missed a wide open layup. It just seemed like he couldn't yeah. gather himself. Down to the final three of this possession. Nothing doing there for Trap, no whistle. Now five on four the other way. And a foul called on Wong before he ran over Hemingway, I believe. You see Miami coming with a big defensive play. Walker coming with that block on Trap. Not being able to take advantage of having the numbers. Clemson with that, lift, that lead expanding to 13. If you're Miami, you got to find a way to be able to penetrate that zone. You're not going to beat them by knocking down threes. Walker snaps the long drought. It had been about five minutes and 15 seconds since Miami's last field goal make. And again, Evan, if you saw how they were able to get that shot for Walker, you got to penetrate that zone and give them an opportunity to score. Neither team is one of the better three-point shooters Next to last and last in the lead, going back to Clemson, they've been able to, to stretch this lead out by being able to penetrate. You see yet another turnover by Clemson. Good defense by Brooks. And I think they're going to rule this one off Brooks' foot. They do. They change the call. It's Clemson's ball. And everybody can take a breath. Tigers by 11. Bench, the Tigers lead 57-46 with 7.33 to go. And it's time for CPI Securities protecting the paint. Miami seven-footer Nasir Brooks getting a piece of that shot. Well, you see the penetration. And actually, I think that was Anthony Walker that came over. But one of the things for that Miami team is being able to, to come up with some stops. They've got to come up with some bigger stops in with, with less than eight minutes left to go. You see block shots. Clemson three, Miami two. Indeed. Walker with the block. Brooks is still seven feet. That part is true. <laughs> Transfer from Cincinnati, who's played a lot of college ball. 125 games. He's an aspiring chef. Asked Jim Laranega, has he been able to cook you dinner yet this year? And Jim laughed and said no. COVID protocols pretty much prevent that. I bet after he graduates, he'll come visit Jim Laranega and cook him some fancy southern cuisine. <laughs> Next Saturday, Pitt Clemson at noon, Virginia Tech, NC State at 2. On the final Saturday of the ACC men's basketball regular season. I mean, time is a vacuum these days, Brian, but is it hard for you to believe that we're a couple days from March? In the, 2021 has already shot by. I mean, it's amazing that we're, we're embarking upon March. I think for so many trying to get out of 2020, yeah. it's amazing how quickly these last two months have flown by. Feels more like 2020 than it does March 2021. <laughs> and yet we're a couple days away. Got a women's basketball doubleheader for you tomorrow on your regional sports networks, including these two schools going head-to-head. -head. Same time, same play, same schools, different gender, same play-by-play -play man. Kelly Deo will celebrate her birthday alongside me and Brian's chair tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Beautiful play. You saw they ran McGussie off of a pick. Nice curl, forcing the two guys to help for a nice little dump off to Walker. Good decision there by Trap. Pull it back out. If you're Miami, you're going to get back into this game because you can get some stops. Again, Clemson, again, talked about how good they are defensively, but a very dis disciplined ball club, as you see. Alamir Dahl is coming up short. Just his second miss in nine attempts. Olani. That would have got it back to a seven-point game. Here's McGusty with a career-high seven assists today. Wong for three. 
Great recognition by Brooks, realizing that he's got a, a wide open Isaiah Wong. Brad Brownell not too happy with his ball club. Miami being able to cut that lead down to six. 26 points now for Isaiah Wong, the sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey. Yeah, that play was started by McGusty being able to penetrate, force the help. And then good recognition by Brooks getting it over. If you're Jim Laranega, you're impressed upon your ball club is that, hey, we've been able to climb back into this game. We were down by 13. Defensively, you got to limit Clemson and be patient on the offensive end. I'll tell you, Brian, you look at the Miami stat sheet. Obviously, Isaiah Wong's the big scorer with 26. Anthony Walker has 11. Other guys are doing other things. Olani has nine rebounds. McGusty has seven assists. They're not big scorers, but they're still making positive things happen for the Canes. So here's the thing on the offensive end, Evan. They're, they're occupying the defender. A lot of times, a penetration here to force the help, the extra pass, is it's what's getting the ball into the right hands, uh, right player's hands. And so as of late, like you said, is that, you know, you may have a good pass by Cameron Gusty, but then we've seen every now and then Anthony Walker come up with a big play. It's not a matter of all those guys having to score a ton of points, but again, they're all doing their own little things to allow Miami to get back into this game. A little full court pressure from Miami. The Tigers break it. Dawes brings it back outside and the Tigers offense will reset. Dawes, Trapp, Sims, Hemingway, and Tyson, five on the floor. Sims, little stutter step. Hemingway pulls up. And Miami. I thought Hemingway pulled the string right there. Again, a little indecision between shooting that ball, and I thought that he could have gathered himself because Brooks was hesitant on whether to guard him or get back over to Sims. Tigers crowd. Hoping for defense. Brooks right at Sims. Didn't get the call. Tip wouldn't go. Walker keeps it alive. Olani under the bucket. Plus the foul. What a pass by Anthony Walker. Realizing he had Olani. He wide open underneath the basket. And that was a fantastic pass. And then the, the finish by Alani, and you see Anthony walk with the ball, realize he's got Alani under the basket. Nice pass, Alani trying to gather himself underneath to get the and one. I mean, usually a pass where you have to catch it underneath the backboard isn't a great pass, but that time it worked out beautifully. Eight for Elijah. And it's back to a three-point game. This is similar to the last meeting between these two teams in Florida where the Hurricanes just would not go away. Well, and it seemed like for Clemson is that when they were up 13 that they were about to run away with this. Miami coming up with stops and then the fact that they've been able to find some offense. Honor all the way for two. Nice finish by Nick Honor. And I've always thought that when you have a team that's trapping you. You've got the advantage, especially if you can get ahead of the pack. Nick Honor doing a good job of opting to be able to finish. He just put his head down and said, I'm taking this one-on-one -on -one and I'm going to score. Snapped a 10-0 Miami run. Now McGusty will try. Brooks called for the foul. You see Ms. here, Brooks Ben get caught. And you see a penetration right now. And see Honor being able to realize he's got the advantage. A guy that can finish with both hands. And then the other end, you see Nasir Brooks with a nice little chicken wing in the back of, of Sims. Sold well by Amir. And that's number three on Nasir Brooks. Now if you're Miami, you've got to make sure that you get back. You do not want to give the guards from Clemson an opportunity to get downhill and go right to the basket. In the final five minutes, oh, that was a cross check right there from Anthony Walker. Dawes staggers, but he's back on his feet. And you see the penetration and then a step out by Anthony Walker trying to go for that steal. See Alamir Dawes trying to get in a push up. Yeah, that was a hockey maneuver right there. <laughs> Big possession here for Clemson. Trying to stretch it back to a three-possession game. Deflected by Brooks, who saves it to Wong. Great play by Nasir Brooks being able to get down and to recover. Keep that ball in play. Give out Miami an opportunity to come back into this five-point lead. When you look at the box score, Brooks is three points, one rebound, three assists. He, he has made his mark and been an impact player at both ends of this game.
Nine to shoot for the Canes. McGusty gets inside the paint. And the rebound for Tyson. Good defense by Allen Mill Dawes. You saw that last time. Being able to stay right in front and challenge. Good ball movement for the Tigers. Tyson will take it. Would not go down. Here's what I always thought that as a player is that in the last three or four minutes of a post game, I'm trying to put myself in a position where I can get some spacing and get the ball and try to make a good play at the rim. A great defense on the perimeter. And the loose ball picked up by Dawes. If you're Cam Augusta, you got to be better with the ball. Ball security is important if you're going to pull out that win. That last time, you got to be a little bit more decisive in getting the ball to Isaiah Wong. Clemson would love to get buckets, but you get the feeling they're going to win this game with their defense. And that has so often been the case this season. Under three minutes we go. Seven to shoot this trip. Honor kicks it for Sims. Big shot, Amir Sims. And that play, Evan, was set up because Honor turned the corner. And he forced Brooks to have to help a little bit. Good recognition, realizing he's got Amir Sims coming out. And all afternoon long, taking advantage of knocking down that three when he has it. 19 for Amir Sims. 8 of 12 from the floor, 3 of 4 from deep. Augusti stripped by Trapp. Cam Tigers defense getting stingy again. Cam Augusti called trying to do too much with one of the better defenders in Clyde Trapp. You see Trapp coming up with maybe, seems like it may be a little bit of a, a leg cramp. And yeah, holding his calves. If you watch this play and you see the play, Amir, excuse me, uh, Amir Sims knocking down Clemson up by eight. Clemson by eight with 2.18 to go. The undisputed leader of the Tigers is Amir Sims. Brian Oliver, he has played every single minute so far today. He's got 19 points to show for it. And Evan, in the over, we talked about how he was a problem for my team and Coral Gables. And today, he's done the same. He's a guy that's come up big for them inside and out. I like the fact that he's made big plays of being able to defend and be the leader of what Clemson's been able to do. And again, knocking down threes. He's three for four from behind the arc. 19 points, six rebounds. And again, I think that without a doubt, you know that he's the leader of this ball club because he has stepped up this afternoon. And Jim Laranega would be fine not having a game plan for Amir Sims again. And his two games against the Canes this year, and Wong knocked that one out of bounds. Sims in the two games, 18 for 26 from the floor, 44 points and counting. Tigers won 66-65 at the Watsko Center on January the 2nd. Only game all year Hurricanes have lost when winning at halftime. Tyson with a dagger. Nice play coming out of the timeout by Brad Brownell running that pick and roll. You force the defense to have to show. They showed two guys, had to pick up the, the, the cutter, allowing Hunter Tyson to be wide open. How about Hunter Tyson, what he's been able to do, knocking down shots today. Yeah. Great defense. Tyson with three three-pointers. He'd only made a three in two of Clemson's last eight games. Alani saved it. McGusty needs it. And it's not there for him. You can tell that shot by McGusty did have his legs, and you wonder if fatigue is a factor. Well, he's still playing hard defensively, but Dawes able to keep possession alive. And Brad Brown now just wants this possession to stabilize. Obviously, where you are with Clemson, up by 11. The clock is your friend. You take time, run the clock, clear it out, go for a penetration, extra pass. Nick Honor. And they got Sims for the foul. Number three in Amir. 58.5 remaining. And that will be one and one at the other end. Seventh team foul on the Tigers. Anthony Walker has improved from the free throw line up to 67% now on the season. 
And here's the deal for Miami is that you want to knock down these free throws and get immediately into your, your pressure. You want to get some turnovers because this is not one of the better three-point shooting teams in the conference. I want to say last at 29%. So you want to try to knock down and get some deflections and, and try to stretch this game out. Well, obviously, the story of Miami's season has been told many times. A ridiculous barrage of injuries, and they're on the verge of losing their fifth straight game. They lost five in a row one time last year. Miami men's basketball has not lost more than five games in a row since the 06-07 season. And they dropped seven straight in the Frank Haith era. Clemson looking to put this one away. You talk about this Miami team, but how about the fight from this Jim Laranega, Timmy, you see Wong come up with the foul. With such a short bench and then playing against this Clemson team that's so tough defensively and the fact that they go 10, 11 deep. I think it's just a matter of Clemson wearing them down and making up big plays. I thought they shot the ball extremely well too. 49 and then knocking down six threes. Clemson has six threes in the second half, 11 threes in the ball game, 11 of 22. Just their fourth, uh, fifth time all season with double digit threes. 39.1 seconds left. Clemson will shoot one and one after the timeout. Let's talk about what's ahead for the Tigers. I mean, they're about to do something that hasn't been done here in this program since they won the ACC regular season title in 1990. They're gonna win five straight ACC games. They go to Syracuse this week and then close the season next Saturday against Pittsburgh. Well, one of the things that you look at as they're 10 and one at home is being able to use that defense. And so uh, when we were talking to Brad Brunell, one of the things that he kept talking about is that how intense his team plays, how they play, uh, pay attention to detail, and their defensive intensity. And you saw that today. Miami came out, was able to get what they wanted. But when you look ahead and what they have ahead of them is that this is a team that is deep. This guy scores and you got a star in Amir Sims and you play really good defense. That's a great recipe for success. Well, Brad Brownell, the seventh longest tenured coach currently at Miami. I think if he were an NBA coach, he'd be like the fourth longest tenured NBA coach, but seventh in the ACC. 39 seconds away from his 200th win at the helm of the Tigers. That'll put him in the company of Mike Krzyzewski, Leonard Hamilton, Roy Williams, Mike Bray, Jim Beheim, and Tony Bennett to have at least 200 wins at their current ACC programs. And by the way, Jim Laranega is at 197 wins at Miami in his 10 years there. thing about this Clemson team, Brian, they, they have an identity, and that will serve them well, you think, in the month ahead. Well, and a lot of times, Evan, a lot of teams will go in and you want to hang your hat on something, and it's obvious that with this Clemson team, they hang their hat on defense. And the biggest thing, too, is that will your defense travel? And again, you talked about this team that has had to stop, start with the protocols, and I thought it was interesting to talk to Brad Brunell. When they shut down, they're not allowed to do anything. And so for a team that uh, hangs their hat on that defense, it takes a little while to be able to get your rhythm back. One of two for Dawes. He's got a season high, 19 points, all off the bench. Long to the bucket, now 28 for Isaiah. Might be too a little too late for Miami. Oh, and Sim slipped. The pass was behind him. Good thing he's all right. 23.9 to go. Eight-point game. Seen crazier things happen, but we, Reggie yeah. Miller's not in the house. <laughs> Don't believe Reggie's in the air. Our, our director, Lonnie Dale, could get Reggie on the phone in 10 seconds. Nice. Working with Reggie for a long time on TNT. No good for Isaiah. He's going to finish the day 10 for 18. 28 points, but in a losing effort. 
And the Clemson Tigers, for the first time in 31 years, have won five straight ACC games. 66-58 the final today as Brad Brownell wins his 200th as the Tigers head coach. That was a big game by Clemson at being able to fight off Miami's early run. Good defense. Again, Amir Sims coming up big. But the guy that I thought that came in and gave a huge shot in the arm was Alamir Dawes. You talked about his 19 points. Four for four behind the arc. Fifteen and five for the Clemson Tigers. And it's been a roller coaster of a season, Brian. They obviously started hot, then had the COVID pause, had, had three rough losses, but now find themselves playing as well as anybody. And at this exact moment, no one in the ACC has a longer winning streak. Five consecutive wins for the Tigers. They'll try to make it six on Wednesday against Syracuse. They sing the alma mater here at Little John. In just a moment, we will chat with Alamir Dawes. Enjoy the moment. Seven in his career against Miami. Clemson sweeps the season series. Tigers scored 66 in both games. A one-point win on January the 2nd and an eight-point win here on the penultimate day of February. Huge game for Alamir Dawes. He's got the headset on and I think we can he can see us. Alamir, congratulations on the win today. Can you hear us? Okay, okay. You, you, you've had a, a tough last month or so offensively. What was the difference that allowed you to drop 19 on the Canes today? Um, just my preparation throughout the week. You know, we didn't have a game, and during the um, hour break, you know, because we had a lot of guys that, you know, test positive from Corona, if you, you didn't know that. But um, just the preparation. I've been in the gym, you know, after practice, before practice. You know, just reps, 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 and just hard work, honestly. Now, when you came in off the bench, I thought that it was your energy in the first half that kind of turned the tide for you guys. What was your mentality coming in, especially after you saw your first shot go down? Um, just to keep it going. You know, we have you know, a lot of depth on our team. So, you know, when I get in, I just, you know, give it all that I have until I'm tired. <laughs> and then, um, you know, uh, we have a lot of players rotating in and out. So I just... You know, just keep energy up and make sure that I'm doing a good job of doing that, you know, and doing a good job of leading when I'm out there. So that's that's basically what the, um, the goal was for me today. Al, the last time the Clemson Tigers won five consecutive ACC games, man, it was long before you were born. It was 1990. <laughs> yeah. What does it mean to, to, to make that kind of history with this team, and what does it say about what you guys can do over the course of the next month? It means a lot, you know. Um, it, it means that, you know, we we a good team and we just got to keep doing what we're doing on our end and then we'll we we'll keep going and keep winning games and, um, you know, potentially be in an NCAA tournament and, you know, make some noise in there. So, Al, as you guys close out the regular season, what's the focus of your team as you go into the, the ACC tournament and potentially onto the NCAA tournament for this team? Just to keep doing what we're doing, you know, just remain as a team and, you know, doing what we um, came here to came here to do and just you know just um focus on us honestly just having that well connected team and, and being able to uh just get better get better and get better so Al, last thing today was your coach's 200th win oh, wow. as head coach of the tigers what's it like playing for brad brownell um i think it's great honestly he has that that chip on the shoulder as a coach and you know me i have that chip on the on my shoulder as a player so we kind of can relate to each other and just his his intensity when we're in the game and we playing and he's you know bending his knees getting a defensive stance when we in our defensive stance so just um it, it's been it's been great and you know you know we got a lot of more games to go so 
Alamir Dawes, great to see you get it rolling thank again you, today. Best of luck this week appreciate in Syracuse. It. Thank you. Appreciate it. 19 points for the New Jersey native Alamir Dawes. We'll be back after this. Fifth consecutive ACC game for the first time since 1990. And we all remember what happened back then. ACC regular season title. Impressive win today, Brian Oliver. Welcome back to Little John Coliseum as the Tigers withstand 28 points from Isaiah Wong and, frankly, a valiant battle from Miami. But the Tigers were excellent defensively and they made their timely shots, and that's been the formula all season. Yeah, and I thought that Clemson just wore them down. Again, we talked about how good they are defensively. What looked like that Miami was going to stretch out their lead early, Clemson was able to tighten the screws, only allowing them 58 points. We talked to Alan Dawes and what he did. And again, this Clemson team knocking down 11 threes. There was a lot that went on to this game that shows that they were able to dominate, especially in the second half. Clemson at Syracuse on Wednesday. This Miami team continues to get great offensive performances from Isaiah Wong. Hurricanes have a tough challenge just two days from now, Monday night against Virginia. But Evan, he was uh, he was keeping them in the game again because of his ability to be able to, to make shots, to penetrate and break down the guards from, from Clemson. This, again, one of the better teams uh, in defensively in the league, but he was able to get his offense. I thought that he did as much as he could today to try to keep Miami in it. Man, at the end, it was just too much Clemson. But Isaiah Wong was huge today with a monster afternoon. Amir Sims, one of two 19-point scores for the Tigers. Dawes and Sims each with 19, and, you know, 19 of the 21 bench points from the guy we just chatted with, Al Amir. Yeah, and going back to Sims again, we highlight the fact that he is a matchup problem. I like the fact that they were able to get his points inside, outside, and a guy for them that took his time, but then when he had that opportunity, he started the game out by knocking out threes, then realized that he can get the ball inside and score at will. He came up big on both ends of the floor. I thought that one of the things is when Dawes came in and gave them their points, it was Sims that was doing really good on defense, being up big. But again, he proved that he's the leader of this team, and this Clemson team will go as far as he takes them. Well, this Clemson Tigers team is poised to be ranked in the top 25 again. Obviously, they were up to number 12 in the country with their hot start, and they're poised to go to their 13th NCAA tournament. They love to get back to the Sweet 16, something they did three years ago. It certainly looked like they have the makeup to do it and the depth, Brian, to do it. Yeah, and this team is built. When you talk about a team that plays as good as, as they do on defense, and then they do go deep. You've got guys that can knock down shots, and they've proven that they're one of the most talented teams and can be dangerous come March time. They had some guys who are big scorers like Nick Honor who is quiet today, but we know how good Nick Honor can be in big situations. Yep, so again, defense will over travel. Can you get the offensive efficiency that they've gotten this last little run, winning five in a row? All right, Clemson trying to push its way up into the top four in the ACC and earn that bye in the ACC tournament. Certainly well on their way. Now five straight ACC wins. The Tigers for the season are 15 and five. And 9-5 and in the ACC. Your final score today, Tigers 66, Hurricanes 58. For our producer, Jay Hoover, our director, Lonnie Dale. For my partner, Brian Oliver. I'm Evan Leffler. Thanks so much for watching ACC Basketball.